Welcome to Live Talk with Faye, and this is Faye, and I am just excited about today's show. I did want to mention this morning that um, I'd like for all of you to pray for the victims, their families uh, from the Las Vegas shooting that happened last night. From what I understand, there was 50 killed and about 400 injured, and this is not a good thing. It's not from God. Don't think that God's punishing people because they went to a concert because that's not it. This is not the hand of God. So please pray for those uh, families of those victims and, you know, the people that were hurt. Pray for a quick recovery for them. Um, we are so excited this morning. You've been listening to a little music here and it is just totally awesome. I'll get it off now so that you can um, hear our speaker when he talks. My guest today is um, a pastor. His name is Dr. Timothy Miller. He pastors Redemption Life Tabernacle Church in Haskell, Oklahoma. He's the head bishop of Redemption Life Worldwide Institute in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Dr. Tim Miller has traveled across the country preaching, teaching, and singing the kingdom of God since 1998. He's an ordained minister. He's been called to places all over the country to lead worship and do revivals. And that was Dr. Him, Tim that you were just listening to. So he does an awesome job with his music. Uh, Dr. Tim has been coaching basketball since 1984, has over 3,000 wins, and also is a scout that goes around and finds good players to go to colleges. So I thought that was just totally awesome. You can find Dr. Tim on Facebook, or for more information, go to www.rlwi.org to check out what he does. Dr. Tim, welcome today, and just greet your um, viewing audience. Hello, everyone. We're delighted to be here today, and thank you for that great introduction of what we have done over the years, and we're just glad to be here. Okay. Amen. Okay. Amen. Um, Dr. Tim and I are going to be talking about something just brand new. Um, it's not brand new to me. I've actually taken a class in this. So before we get to talking too much, I'm just going to tell you just a little about this. It's generational culture. Um, prior to 1946, the people that was born before 1946 are called the matures. And those were the ones who experienced World War I and World War II, the Roaring Twenties, the Great Depression, Pearl Harbor, Korean War, atomic bomb, and the FDR administration. That's kind of how we labeled those people. They saw all of that. They went through all of that. Well, then between 1946 and 1964, the baby boomers came along. And a lot of you that are watching now might be included in that 
air. So um, the baby boomers experience moving to the burbs and the picture window, the Cold War, civil rights, space race, assassinations, <coughs> Vietnam War, energy crisis, and none other than Watergate. We went through all of that together and we're going through more still because a whole lot of us are still here. Uh, between 1965 and 1980 are the Generation X. They experienced Roe versus Wade, which I hope one day will be reversed. Uh, they've challenged disaster, latchkey, kids, single parenting, fall of Berlin, Berlin Wall, the Persian Gulf War, AIDS, more of Watergate, downsizing, and the Reagan ass assassination attempt. Between 1981 and 2000 are the Millennials who experienced world trade, Pentagon attack, um, Oklahoma bombing, internet access, technology, kids shooting kids. What just happened this morning, that wasn't a kid, but we've had it in a lot of the schools lately. The death of, of Princess Diana and Mother Teresa, globalization, and George W. Bush. The only thing I'll say about the generation after the millennials is none of them knew the world without social media. So, you know, that's a whole new world for them. They, they would not know what to do if they didn't have their phones. They didn't have their computers. I don't know if they would know how to go to a rotary phone and pick it up and dial somebody or not, because they just are not accustomed to all of those things that we were way back then. Um, Dr. Tim, I'm going to put another one of your songs on and let's let everyone that has just joined in hear a little bit more and then we'll get into the, the questions. Yes, and that's actually me and my wife singing on that one together. All right. That is me and awesome. the lovely, me and the Lori, lovely Lori. We sing that together on that song. Praise God. Well, maybe one day she can come on here with you, and then the world could meet her too. Um, I want to get into Amen. the questions questions now and let's just talk about generational culture and the difference in the times and, and um, 
I just also wanted to say thank you for everybody that's watching, whether you're watching from the live stream, YouTube channel, Facebook, or whatever. Just thank you for watching. Thank you for being a part of Live Talk with Faye. God bless you today. Okay, number one, first question. What influences do you think the matures, the ones that were born prior to 1946, had on the following generations? Well, I, I think the, the one thing that, and let me just kind of talk about this. My uncles are born probably about that time. And my grandmother, would bless her, so she's passed on. My grandfather, which she's passed on. Um, they taught me one thing, being a part of that generation. And that one thing was work hard. Whatever you do, work hard. I remember seeing my grandfather outside just laboring, fixing line boards and cars. You know, have computers and stuff like we have now. So they used their hands to to um, manufacture things, I would say. Right. Um, they were at fixing houses, automobiles, um, um just whatever it took with their hands to fix, they was very good at it. Yeah. And I was a part of the other generation, but I watched them. And let me just say this, even from a church standpoint, those people was different than we are today. Cause I remember growing up in church with the older saints and them even work in church work for the Lord, work for the Holy Ghost, work for the Spirit of God. Uh, you know, when you praise God, work and praise God, you know, give God your best. Everything they did it had to do with giving best to do it. Yeah. And so I learned a lot from that generation. You would call me an old soul because I learned a lot from them that I am now passing down to them. And I can imagine what my grandfather and grandmother would think right now with them passed on. I'm pretty sure they probably said to themselves, like, wow, look, he turned out to be. Because I listened to them. One thing I would always say this to my grandmother, I remember her always taking out this piece of paper and always adding stuff. And I used to wonder, what is she doing? Why? She was sitting there budgeting, making sure that everything was taken care of. I didn't understand what she was doing then, but now I understand. And I, I say to, to all the matures, God bless you. you. You set a great foundation for this country Amen. and for the church at large. God bless you. I mean, they, they set a serious foundation that the, the generations that come behind them, they must understand that the foundation that were laid before them, because if you don't understand what will happen before you, you can never build greatness unless you understand what happened before you. Right. Right. Um, Dr. Tim, I remember um, when I was a young girl, my parents was in church all the time. I mean, every time the doors were open, they were there. And I remember one time being in a 17 week revival. And we didn't miss, I didn't miss any. So if mom couldn't go for some reason, me and dad still went. And I was there playing the organ, you know, just being involved as a young teenager. And to me, you know, of course we are the church, but that building has something very special to me because that's where we get together. To me, it's kind of like a Weight Watchers Club. You go there to get built up so that you can go outside and then win the lost. So, you know, right, right. we have to have a place where people come and they learn, they get discipled, they get taught the word of God. Once they're Christians, they can't just go out on their own and know it all because they need the matures and people that have lived for God to teach them. So I, I also appreciate everyone out there that is from that age group. And I say, God bless you. And number two, what do you believe the current generation is? Do you believe the current, current generation is lost? I wouldn't call the generation lost. I would say 
that this generation needs help. Um, it's, it's hard to explain this generation. It, I deal with this generation daily because I'm a basketball coach. And I deal with a young men and young women, even in our church. We have a, what I call a youth explosion happening right now in our church with kids that will say down from 22 down to t t t 10. And um, a, a few weeks ago, we had 21 young people come up on the altar. Now, they don't know why they came on the altar. That's this generation. They, they, they don't, everything is fast. The, you know, microwave fast, uh, internet is fast, phones are fast, you know, church is fast, uh, preaching is fast. Now preachers, you know, back in the day, they could preach three hours and everybody would still be into them preaching. Right. If a preacher preached now three hours, he's preaching too long. And so they are shaping messages now within 20 minutes because this generation just don't have the patience because everything is fast. Yes. And so uh, I would call them lost. I would call them undecided. I would call them um, unprepared. Well, now let me go back. When we're talking about the mature generation, the one thing that they did was taught you how to be prepared. Well, this this generation, because of the generation, the baby, the the my generation, the millennials are not prepared for what's happening right now, because my generation was was a bunch of players, right. and you know we we we're the beginning of of all the technology, sitting at home playing Atari. I remember when being a young kid playing Atari and all that. We started all of this. So I would call them lost. I would call them more unprepared in a generation that just doesn't understand their identity. That's what I would call them. Unprepared and it not actually their fault. No, no. I, I wouldn't I would not call it their fault because I a lot of times when I'm preaching, I would say, We're the we're the reason that all this is going on. <laughs> we started this. We you did. know, and I, I would I, I remember my pastor telling me when I was a young, young baby in the Lord, he said, slow down, boy, slow down. This, 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 what do you mean? What you mean? Slow down. Now I get these young preachers up in my church. That's so I want to say to them, slow down. You're going like a hundred miles per hour. Just slow down. What he used to say to me. And I understand what my grandma you know, the mature used to say to me, I'm trying to pass it down to them and get them to understand that this is a whole different generation and to hear God for what he's really saying now. Right, right. Well, um, I know there's a lot of young people that kind of don't even know who they are. You know, I mean, they go around, they, they don't know what they want to do in life. They don't know if they want to go to college or if they don't want to go to college. Um, Today's world, it's hard to find a job at all without going to college. So, you know, these young people, they need the generations before them to teach them and they need to listen, you know, of what we went through. And they need to listen that there are certain things that are important that's going to help them in life. College is one of those things. I mean, all of these uh these sports players that you're you're getting and bringing into different colleges and stuff they couldn't do that if they didn't go to school right right i i totally agree uh th th this this gen generation n needs to understand that um education you cannot live you just said it, you cannot live in today's society without two things prominent in your life. There's two things that you must have. You must have education and you must have God. If you don't have God, you don't have nothing to fall back on, which is your basic principle of faith that makes you solid. Right. And if you don't have education, you don't have the thing that's going to help you to propel in life. Or So they're, they're missing those two elements. They're, they're this generation 
really in its own mindset. Jesus called this generation a perverse generation. That's the terminology that he used. And what do I mean? They call good bad and bad good. You know, I sometimes just sit there in amazement going, what are you thinking? What did you just do? Because what they call good, we would have said it was, and what we they say was bad, we said, no, that's really what you need. So it's, it's the contrast of the two. But some kind of way, we're going to have to learn how to, to bridge the divide that we have between these cultures. Yes. Yeah. So that that's that's what I mean. I I mean that's that's this generation needs some help. Yes. Prayer. Very very much so. Um, and with that said, I am going to um, I'm going to show you just a little bit. The next question that I have is. What do you think causes gangs and the different street kids and, and all of this going on? But before you answer that question, Dr. Tim, I want to share our magazine from this month and just tell you a little bit. It just came out yesterday. And the person that um, I featured as the, the writer is not only a writer, but he's also an artist. And he has this character that he's drawn for 44 years and he takes him to the streets of St. Louis to share love. Back when we had the big Ferguson incident, he was right in the middle of that riot, sharing love with this character. This character goes around with scriptures. They write them on windows. They, they just got through doing a big uh, paint Louis instead of St. Louis, it's paint Louis. They have 1.9 miles where artists come from all over the world and they paint wow. well, this person paints from um, from the perspective of of God and sharing love. So let me just share the magazine just a little bit with you. Hold on. All right. His name is Murford, and if you see him up here in the corner, he's ready to um, to shake your hand. And let's just go on here just a little bit. There's Murford up here in the top. Um, a special Murford came here for Faith Unlimited. It says, do not use sparingly. And um, this is one of the very first characters that um, his name is. Wendell Phillips, they call him Phil Berwick. And this is him right up here in the corner. And um, there's going to be a lot going on about him really soon in St. Louis. And I'll show you that page. This is him. Meet the man behind the Murfords. And he draws, draws Murfords. They hang in trees. They're liable to be on the front of a business. Um, just all over the place, he has these Murfords. Um, here's his article. And actually he said that this is the first time he's wrote about himself. Um, uh, most of the time it's somebody else, but here's one with, uh, with his hands all raised up and praising God. Um, here's some, these guys here are from all over the world. This one here is a brand new immigrant that came into the United States. Here's Murford on some trains. And this one here, um, the earthquakes in Mexico, he was helping these young men to um, get tools donated. There's a shovel in Murford's hand to get tools donated to take to Mexico to help them. And here's the, the paint Lewis uh, that they just got over this last weekend that they did. And here was the article, the man behind the Murfords wrote by someone else. Uh, he actually um, received awards for this. You know, God uses pe people in many different ways. Artist Phil Berwick brings smiles to St. Louis and whoever meets him with his art. And I can tell you that his Murfords are no longer just in the streets of St. Louis. They have ventured out to now where I know for a fact that they are outside of the United States. In fact, the way I met Phil 
was through someone in Pakistan. The funniest thing, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I was friends with this person in Pakistan. This person told me about Phil that lives two hours up the road and I met Phil through him. So it's just an awesome, awesome um, magazine. And uh, besides that, we have ads in the magazine. We have um, articles, this article here, His Love Conquers Fear is by Dr. Bill, my husband. Uh, we have all kinds. Here's a tree of life orphanage that I'm featuring this month. Um, this gentleman had 21 children in his orphanages, orphanage. And recently a mother passed away, leaving five children without either parent. And he took those children in. And then after he got those five, he got this little girl here who is three. So now he has 27 children in his orphanage. His orphanage is not registered. And uh, it's called now the Tree of Life Orphanage, and uh, it's not registered yet. And we are trying to get the funds raised to register that because um, if you're going to go out and try to get funds, then you need to be a registered. And he says, how do I do that when I have to buy food with the money that comes in? Well, we're trying to help him now. So this here is a Revival on the Doorstep with... Um, past uh, brother Bill and Melissa Shepard from Oklahoma. And if you have not heard of them, go to this page and look at it. This is about Halloween. It's changing Halloween all the way around. The people that sell candy don't know what they've done for Halloween. This is now a way to share Jesus to the children and their parents that come to your doorstep. And it's an easy way. They've had great success just since one year ago. They are now in 20 states in the United States and in over five countries. So this is spreading great. It's taking over the old Halloween. So it's, it's just an awesome thing. Um, try to get here to at least one more article to show you. Here, this is Pastor Bill Hackworth from Oklahoma. Jesus, the servant of servants. And, you know, I have to read these articles because I edit them. So, um, you know, these articles in this magazine are awesome. They're wonderful. They'll bless you. And so just get this magazine and look at it. You can get it two ways. You can get it free online and look at it just like I was showing you. Or now you can go to Amazon.com and pull up Faith Unlimited with my name, Faye Hanshu, and you'll find the articles. Now, this one is not yet on Amazon. It's going to take me two or three days to get it to get it put on there because it just came out yesterday. But you can get, um, we started in, July started our fourth year with Faith Unlimited. And so July, August, September, and soon October will all be on Amazon.com. And if you want your own personal copy, then you can go there and get that. So let me get off of screen share and I'll get back with Dr. Tim. Hold just one moment, please. Okay. Am I back with you? Yes, you are. Okay. Okay. So Dr. Tim, tell us a little bit about what you think brings all of this hate into the communities, the gangs and all of these different things that's going on today. Well, I think a part of it goes back to what we said earlier. Uh, when when you don't have no identity and you don't know who you are, you, you, you cling to the wrong thing or the wrong people. Um, a lot of your people that are in gang are what we call, uh, I call it a curse generation. What, 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 what I mean is their father. And when you don't have fathers in the in the communities, then gangs become their fathers. When when um, when pastors are not active in their community in the church, they're losing out on touch of of raising up uh, a generation of young men that can find their identity. That's why I take the time. That's why. The, that's why the Lord got me in education years ago was because I seen in the spirit that our young men 
was love. The only way that I knew at the time to really touch them was through sports. Sports was an avenue that they was a part of. Entertainment was a, is another avenue. So we, we had to, and these things are happening is because they're either motherless, fatherless, or they don't have no identity. And some of these children are godless. They just don't have, they don't have the, the mentality of God around them. Nobody's speaking words of faith or even positive words around them. So the only thing they hear is negative. So some, you know, something's going to have to change. It is what it is. That's why we see things like Ferguson and places like that, because we get, in some cases, we have what we call, and, and I, I understand it in certain things. When, when, you, when you're dealing with, with um, relations between policemen and communities or, you know, uh, racism in some ways, you get what we call out of balance. And what, we, what we've gotten into this country, extreme rights and far extreme lefts. Yeah. Somewhere we're going to have to come back to the middle like they were, like we talk about the matured. We have to come back to the middle like the mature were and learn how to work together again, Democrat, Republican, black, white, whatever, you know, whatever nationality or whatever you're dealing with. Yeah. We had to pull it all back to where we're like little sex and pockets of different people and we're lost. Yes. Yes. Um Dr. Dr. Tim, in the magazine, I made a special page. And on that page, I have the national anthem, I have a flag, I have a picture of my son who was in the Navy, and I say that we will stand for the flag. And we will stand for the national anthem. Now I know you're involved in a lot of sports. What do you think about these NFL teams that did not uh, take a stand for the national anthem when it was sang at their um, sports events? I know I'm putting well, you on the spot. Well, well, well I, I and, and if you kind of follow me a little bit on Facebook, you kind of see some of the things that I say. And, and I'll make myself clear. Me and my team, we will stand for the national anthem. But here's my but. I don't think, I think when, think when our president got involved in it, I think we made it bigger than really what it was. And somewhere in here, I told, I won't preach it out of the pulpit because I think there's certain things in the pulpit you're not supposed to. Because you're crossing political lines. You never know, like in my church, you may have a Democrat right here, Republican right here, independent right here, conservative, liberal. We may have varieties of people. They may not all believe the thing. We're going to end up with a big old issue of blood. And so we got to stay away from blood issues is the word I want to use. Um, but back to your question. Do I think they should protest. No, on certain incidents, I'll say no. But do they have a right to protest? Yes. yes. But they should learn the balance of, you know, the scripture says, if eating meat offends my brother, I won't eat it. Well, if they think it offends people, guess what? You need to find a way to protest to where people are not being offended. And you know, Dr. Dr. Tim, do you think maybe the protests, do you think maybe the protests should be when they are not out there playing games because, you know, the, the spectators are paying for watching them. So they're actually taking our time to protest. Don't you think they could do that on their own time? Uh, yeah, I think they. I think you know if they want to protest, they can go stand in the middle of the street and protest. If that's the case, <laughs> you know, I mean, just just get a whole bunch of athletes go stand. I'm pretty sure they'll get somebody's attention. Yeah, I'm sure. You know, I, yeah, and, and I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a big uproar about that too. I don't yeah. think there's no perfect place. Okay, 
right. personally, I don't think there's a if it's a football field, basketball field, of court, if it's uh, at a concert uh, outside in the front of my yard, somebody's going to get offended somewhere. And you that's what it is. A protest, somebody's going to get offended. <laughs> but as Christians, as Christians, we, we should come in with the love of God and try, okay, let me, let me just say this like this. The Levitical priesthood job was to judge between good and The sons of God job is to judge both good and evil. There's a difference between judging between and judging both. Wow. When you judge between, that means you take a stand one side or the other. When you judge both, you look at it from both sides of the spectrum. What I'm doing, I'm looking at it from both sides. You got to remember, I come from the hood. I'm from there. I do understand when they talk about when you're driving and you almost got pulled over by the police for nothing. I understand that. Matter of fact, when Dr. Bill was at, he'll tell you that one day I showed up late. You know why I showed up late? Policemen just pulled me over for nothing. Nothing. I wasn't speeding. I was like, I'm getting ready to go to church. And there was 10 cars that was ahead of me that was going faster than me. I was actually going to speed limit. And guess what? The police went down, turned around. I said, said to me, right now, you cannot act like you're from. Act like you have some sense. He come to my window. I said, yes, sir, uh, you were speeding. I didn't even give him no controversy. To guess what? I don't want to stir up no controversy. Right. The Bible says for all men. So, it, 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 you know, a harsh answer gives wrath. So so if I come and start saying something harsh, guess what's going to happen? It's going to be in a controversy, controversy and I, I'm going to lose. Right. He's a policeman. His job is to protect this country, and I understand his purpose. I must understand my purpose, and my purpose is to, okay, and sell it like I'm supposed to. And yeah. that's, you know, that's, that's what we have in this country. But as saints of God, we must judge both. We can't judge between. If we judge between, we go on one side or the other, and guess what happened? We as saints of God lose because we're not showing the love of God. We're showing the ju we're showing judgment instead of the love of God. Right. That's what I have to say about. It. That's the best way so, it could have been said. I appreciate that. Okay, back on this generation. Now I have this other question: the Generation X's, and let's see, they were born. Um, between 1965 and 1980. The generation have this generation has seen the institutions where they've been taught to believe in them, but they've been betrayed by them. For instance, they've heard a marriage is forever, but they've saw their parents get divorced. It was said, if you work hard, you'll always have a job, but their parents got laid off. The government should be trusted, but then there's Watergate, Iran Contra, etc. What do you think these things have done that have happened to this newer generation that they've seen happen in their their parents' families? Well, I, I, I well, let me just say this: I think a lot of with this generation concerning politics comes from their parents putting negative. Thoughts in their heads. Like, let me just give an example. When I was young, it was told to miss a Republican. And oh, guess what? If I would have took what they told me, I wouldn't trust not one Republican. <laughs> but both, I look at things differently. Makes me to think differently. So I don't just think, okay, like, for example, because Barack 
president, I should automatically agree with everything. Oh, no, I didn't. When Barack Obama put, uh, I said, I'm out. I can't deal with that. It's a little too deep for me, Barack. I can't deal with that. I love gay people. It just means the actions they're doing, I can't agree with. So, you would call me a conservative, right? Oh, well, he's a conservative. Yeah, if you listen to certain things that I preach about the government, about the kingdom of God and the government of this world, that's what you would think. He's a conservative. Matter of fact, you might think I'm a far-right conservative. But at the other end, you might hear me talk about certain socialists. And guess what you would say? He's a Democrat. No, <laughs> I am for the king. is what I am. And what I have to say about this generation is this generation is in the position that it's in because they have seen things in the government that has not worked a certain way. All of the sex scandals. Well, I know we didn't, you know, have a uh, politics supposed to be saved, but Lord, some of the stuff we've seen, like the thing that we just saw with Anthony Weiner. Are you serious? Are you sexting a 15-year-old girl? We've lost. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know, uh, there's certain things that's happened that we've lost faith in, you mm -hmm. know. And, but but we have a chance. Let me just say this. We have to fix some of that. If, if, if everybody can get on the same page and our president can get on the same page with everybody else, right. it's just everybody's going different. They all get on the same page. Right. But yes, this generation has seen things from their parents and it needs to change. Right. One thing, Dr. Tim, that I um, have done, and we did this this last year, and that is we got um, um, a thing going on Live Talk with Faye for the whole month of October last year on uh, party platforms and politics. And you might like a guy or you might dislike a guy because of their charismatic actions or because they're good with this or good with that. But you have to know what that party stands for. Now, I'm not afraid to say that because of something that happened back in 1973, and that's Roe versus Wade, when they made it okay to um, abort children, I will not vote for anyone who believes in abortion. And that's my big stand. Now, before that happened, I saw good people on both sides, which I, you know, I was younger then, but I will take a stand against abortion. I will take a stand against some of the other issues that are on there. And I had a panel of like five different people that came on. They study, they work on government issues and things, and they will tell you what each party platform believes on those issues. So I'm trying to get the word out to younger people. And that's one thing they need to know. Younger people need to know, not just listen to their parents on, you need to vote Republican or you need to vote Democrat or else you need to take a newsstand and go independent. But you need to know what that party platform stands for. And that's what you need sure. to make your decision based on. So we do that before there's going to be an election. We did it this last time. I hope to do it again. I wanted to have something every month to kind of bring people up to speed with different things on it, but I haven't got to do that. It's quite a bit of things on our plate right now. So we do the best we can, but at the same time, that party platform is what people need to look at when they're going to vote for someone, anybody on any party. And they need to know what that party stands for. Because if this person says, well, I don't, I don't like abortion. I don't stand for abortion, but their party platform does. They will fight for uh, for laws that go right along with abortion. So they right, can't, right, they can't discriminate against their party platform. So I agree. Yes. Have a phone call coming in. I wish they would know that during my shows, they can't get a hold of me. Okay. I wanted to go on with the <laughs> next question here. Um, no, let's see. 
Okay, you, you've answered that. My next thing right now was I was going to put some more of your awesome music on. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. And let's listen to another song. Mm -hmm. Dr. Tim, that brings us up to the next question. And I was going to ask you about your music. And that next question is, why is music and the Internet so effective to this generation? Well, the, all the way back to Eve, you know, the first John that talks about it. There's two things that dominate what you see and what you hear. And music dominated us because music, at first, you know, what we heard. But after that change, I think it's about 1984, somewhere in there, you know, music began to take, it was what we saw constantly in video. Well, if you're hearing the wrong message in videos, in girls that don't got no clothes on or, um, 
guys are smoking weed or somebody slapping some girl or, or, or somebody uh, cheating on, on their girlfriend and he got five girls on his, on his sleeves where she got two dudes on her sleeve. This is the wrong image. So music, because of this, music has destroyed the fabric of what I call this generation. And I don't just call it rap music. I'll call it hard rock music as well. Both of those extremes have taken us, well, Lord knows where we have gone to because of the extremes of music. Now, the internet, there's been a bunch of marriages destroyed because of the internet. Internet's good as far as information, but there's a lot of craziness that goes on. I go turn on the internet and I see people cussing people out and, and doing those things. And, you know, it's, it's, it's what our eyes see and it's what our ears see. Here. Those two things affect this generation. And, and we see a lot and we hear a lot. And that's why this generation is affected by it. That's true. Dr. Tim, I even had a preacher on Facebook. I have this thing called spiritual storm stoppers. And whether somebody's having a storm financially in their health or it's a national disaster in the weather, like we've had so many hurricanes lately, I believe we can pray and put a stop to those things. I believe we should Amen. agree together put all the differences aside and come together to agree. But I even had a minister come on Facebook privately, thank God, calling me a fool because I believe that we could do that. He said, why are you, um, why are you telling people this, getting their hopes up and, and all of this? Now I will, I will say publicly, not one time did I tell anybody to stay in Florida or in these areas where the bad weather was. In fact, I went right along right. with the news. If you need to get out of that area, you get out of there. Take care of your life. Take care of your family. But because we were praying for these to stop, I was called a fool because things like that just don't happen. What do you think about that, Brother Tim? Uh, I, that, that person just had no relationship with the Lord. He just didn't <laughs> believe in the call herself a preacher. Just because you're a preacher don't mean you have a relationship with the supernatural. <laughs> you, know, you, you, you have to have a relationship with the supernatural. You know, to be born again means to have a relationship with the supernatural. You can't be born again and still be earthly. If you're born again and you're heavenly, that means you are part of another world, which is the supernatural. Amen. That's all I have to say about that. Amen. Well, my... My next question, Dr. Tim, you were kind of phasing out a little bit. I hope I didn't interrupt anything you were saying. But uh, my next question is, just like the, the artist that we have on the magazine this month that goes around doing his Murfords and writing scriptures by him and, and spreading the love of God, how do you think we're going to change the course of this generation? What actions do you think we can take to do something good that will make a mark and start turning this generation around and start showing love? Well, the, 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 the first thing I would say to, to, to everybody that is listening, everybody, period, pray. pray. I, I just preached yesterday about how Peter that was going to keep Peter, and I preached about how Peter was laying between two guards, and the saints was praying for him consistently. And while they prayed, the shackles that was on Peter's arms fell off while they was praying. And the angel came and got Peter and took him out, to, took him out, got him out to jail. Nobody knows he was there. Takes him through the iron walls. Nobody knows he was there. I don't even understand how Peter even got loose, but. Prayer does supernatural things. Yes. And if we're going to move this generation, the main, the first thing we need to do is pray. The right. second thing we need to do is worship. Amen. Worship has an effect because it's music. It's just like what we, we talked about the negative music. Now we're talking about positive music. Yes. So we got positive words in prayer. We got positive music and words in music. Those two things are to the ears. The third thing is we need to do what 
you're doing right now. We need to invade online. Amen. With positive, with positive preaching, positive words, saying the right stuff. And guess what? People are going to automatically they'll start changing because we're doing the right thing. We have, look, we have to affect the eyes and we have to affect the ears. Because when you affect the eyes and the ears, then you can affect my soul and my heart. Amen. But if you never affect my eyes and my ears, you can't touch my heart. That's all I got to say. Amen. Amen. Dr. Tim, I think one area that the matures um, maybe had a negative input, and that's uh, what they believed in the Bible. They believed it, and they were not willing to change, no matter what. Even if you could show them in the Word where they were wrong, they didn't want to change. They preached hell hot, and they preached damnation to everybody that just didn't walk the chalk. And you right. know, if I if I wasn't a Christian and I went to a church and I heard somebody just tell me how bad I was, I'm not sure I'd want to go back. But if we hear just how much Father God loves us, and and somebody up there is saying, I would really love to introduce you to the person that loves you more than anybody in the entire world could ever love you. That would spark me. That would make me yes. want to hear more about that person. So with all of these things going on, one of the things I have to say is spreading love and and not so much hate, even in the Christian world, you know, not so much you're doing this bad, so you're no good. But Father God loves you. And even though you're having problems, you turn those things over to him and he will help you work them out. And he loves you beyond measure. Yes, yes, I agree. I agree that speaking the word of God changes things. The word of God and the love of God. You know, showing people unconditional love like he showed it to us. Those Amen. that changes things. Amen. 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 Well, I'm going to um I'm going to put another muse another song on before we end, but I wanted to ask, do you have anything to say about the music that we're sharing today? Um, do you have CDs? available that people can get or is this just something you've done at your church or no no at this time i'm actually working on a new cd but i have four other cds if you go on if you go on um youtube look up uh dr timothy miller or look up uh, redemption like a type of church or look up uh a prophetic praise you you will see me on youtube uh you can also contact me at Redemption Life Tabernacle at gmail.com. Redemption Life Tabernacle at gmail.com. And if you contact me, we have five CDs that we'll make available to you just for a small donation. You don't have to send us a lot of money. You send us a donation, and we will, in return, send you five CDs with the God knows great. Uh, music that has been done in the studios over the years. And you'll be blessed for it. Uh, if, you, if you also get our CD that we put out last year, Judah from Head to Toe. Wow. Yeah, it is an ounce, it is, uh, it's the first song that you played today. I'm Judah from Head to Toe. That means I'm a praiser from Head to Toe. Amen. Judah. God bless you. I, I'm enjoying this stuff. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Amen. Well, in case you didn't get that because there was a little crackling going on, Redemption Tabernacle or Dr. Tim Miller on YouTube, or you can go to Redemption Life Tabernacle at gmail.com. And for a small donation, you can get five CDs. And it's like we're playing here today. You won't want to miss out on that. That is awesome. Uh, let them know what you can send to them to take care of shipping and, and and a little extra because it does take money to, to make these CDs. But he is trying to get these out into your hands to, to share love. Uh, Dr. Tim, Amen. before we start the music, do you have anything else you would like to say to your viewers? I just want to say thank you for allowing us to come into your homes and on your computers and on your phones and on your iPads and whatever else you're using. Um, thank you for allowing us to share this generational culture and I'm 
I'm hoping that one day we'll continue on where we are even for right now to show how we're going to change this generation even by the word of God and to the music of the Lord. God Amen. bless you. And uh, I have to go from here and go teach my team after this. And Dr. Tim, I just wanted to say thank you for being on my show today. It's been a great blessing and I appreciate it very, very much. Let's end with some worship. our show today. I love the music. Make sure you go to Redemption Life Tabernacle at gmail.com. Tell Dr. Tim Miller how much you enjoyed his music and the talk today and order these tapes. You will be blessed. Order some extra ones to share with friends and family. God bless you. We love you. Have a wonderful day. Dr. Tim, I'll be with you in just a moment. God bless you all. Don't forget to share a little sunshine. That's S-O-N-S-H-I-N-E with anyone you meet today.